Are your Linux servers staging a rebellion? Does every syslog read like a cryptic riddle and every config file feel like it's written in ancient penguin hieroglyphs? I feel your pain. Sometimes managing Linux systems can feel like herding penguins in a blizzard. And that's where I waddle in. For the past 20 years, I've been the Linux whisperer, teaching millions how to tame their terminals and helping businesses turn their renegade servers into smooth-running machines. Now, I'm offering my expertise directly to you. Whether your issue is a rogue process that's wreaking havoc, a server slower than a turtle, or you have a desire to automate tasks so you could finally take that vacation, don't worry, I've got you covered. Whether you need help with troubleshooting, optimization, configuration, automation, or even security hardening, I'll help you solve just about any Linux-related conundrum, even the ones that make you want to throw your laptop out the window. Let's turn your Linux headaches into high fives. Ready to team up? If so, head over to learnlinux.tv and click on the Request Assistance button. I look forward to working with you. Hello and welcome to Learn Linux TV. In the news lately, there's been all kinds of stories regarding cyber attacks and the companies that unfortunately fall victim to them. And it's the thing that nightmares are made of, but unfortunately, it's all too real. And often the means of intrusion are quite simple. Many companies out there are behind on updates and well, that's all it takes to allow a threat actor into your system. So it's definitely something that we need to keep track of. It seems like a simple thing, but you'd be surprised how many administrators aren't able to keep up on updates for one reason or another. Now, obviously, if you do install all of your updates, that doesn't give you 100% protection against threat actors. But the thing is, if you don't install your updates, well, you're just making it easy for them. But you know what? I get it. Being a system administrator takes a lot of time. There's so many hours. We're often exhausted. Even though the job is a lot of fun, there's a lot to keep track of. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you unattended upgrades is something you can install in Ubuntu as well as Debian, which will automate updates, and then it'll be one less thing that you have to worry about. With unattended upgrades, you can configure your server or workstation to automatically install updates for you, so that way you won't have to rely on remembering to do it eventually. It's an easy process to set up, and it consists of a single package to install, one service to run, and just a few files to edit. And you're going to see the entire process in this video. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know that the official shop for Learn Linux TV was just updated with brand new products. So you can get a shirt like this one or one of many others. Inside the shop, you'll find distro themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you can check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube you could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time. So it's a win-win. And thank you so much for supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. Now let's dive into unattended upgrades. All right, so here in my terminal, what I'm going to do is connect to the instance that I've created for today's lesson. And this is going to be an Ubuntu server. Let's connect to this instance here. And now I'm logged in. And here's some information regarding my installation in case you're curious. But anyway, let's get started. Anyway, the first thing we'll do in regard to setting up unattended upgrades is install the package. So the first thing I'll do is run sudo apt update. And right now it shows that I have 60 packages that could be upgraded. I'm going to ignore that for now because we want this done automatically. Next we'll run sudo apt install unattended hyphen upgrades. Now this package may or may not be installed already depending on your configuration, but I'll try to install it now. Let's see what happens. In my case, it was already installed, but that was the first thing we needed. We needed to have that package installed in the first place, and now we do, so we can continue. Next, what we'll do is make sure that the service is running. And to do that, what we'll do is run systemctl and then status, and then unattended upgrades. We just wanna make sure that the service is running and also that it's enabled. Here we can see that it is enabled, so the unattended upgrade service will start when the server starts. 
and is currently running because we see active and running within the output. So far, so good. At this point, unattended upgrades might already be working. As I mentioned earlier, it's a really simple thing to set up. When we installed the package, it already started the service for us, so as soon as we started it, it was ready to go. But the thing is, I really don't like to use anything without configuring it first, so let's see what that looks like. So what we'll do is navigate to the configuration directory. We'll type cd, and then the path is slash etsy slash apt slash apt.conf.d, just like that. And if we list the storage, you can see that we have a handful of files here that we can configure. But don't worry, I'm not going to make you edit all of these. There's only two of them that we need to focus on. So what we'll do is just run sudo and then nano, and you could use vim or whatever your favorite text editor is. We want to open up one of these files, and the file that we want to open is 20 auto upgrades. This one right here. So let's open that up. And we have just two lines of configuration within this file. If both of these options here are set to one, we see the number one in double quotes. If that's the case, then there's nothing you have to do. Basically what the first option is doing here is it's enabling the checking of updates. So we need that to be enabled for this to work at all. The second option is enabling unattended upgrades. So if either of these options are not set to one, then this entire process will not work. In my case, it's already correct. So I'll close out. And then we'll move on to the next file. And it's going to be this one right here. This is the last file that we'll need to edit in this video. But the thing is, there's a lot to tweak. Now we're not going to go through this entire file line by line. As you can see, there's quite a bit of information here. But what we are going to do is take a look at the more common options. And the first one is going to be unattended upgrade allowed origins. So if I could get that a little centered here. So it's this block right here. Now actually, we don't need to make any changes to this, but I at least wanted to point out what this does. Basically what this block is doing is enabling a particular repository to be automatically updated. The thing is you might just want to install security updates automatically, but maybe feature updates are those that you really don't want to have immediately, but security updates are definitely important. So we really do want those. But when it comes to feature updates, it could be a bit questionable whether or not we need to focus on that. So right here we can see, for example, that the security repository is not commented out. If there's two slashes in front of a line, then it's ignored. And that also means that we have a few repositories that are also commented out. So for example, if I wanted to do more than just install security updates, I wanted regular updates as well. What I could do is just remove the two slashes there to enable that repository. Honestly, the defaults here are fine because it's going to focus on security updates. So you don't really have to make any changes in this section, but if you want to, feel free to do so. Next, we have an option for blacklisting a package, which means we won't be updating that package automatically. And this might be something that you'll need to do if there's a package that doesn't update cleanly, or maybe there's a change control procedure with something in particular. Whatever the reason is, you could add a package here to avoid automatically updating it. But I would caution you to only use this if you absolutely have to. Not updating a package, well, that's not a good idea. We want our updates. And if a package doesn't ever get updated, then that package could become a means through which a threat actor gets into your system. So again, only use this if you really have to. And if you do have to, you could follow the guidance here within the output. We see an example for libc6, libc6dev, and so on. So basically what we do here is we add a package to the list. We already see libc6 and a few others that are on the list already, but they're commented out. And if those were not commented out, then those packages would not be updated. You can follow the logic here to add a package if you need to. In the case of libc6, we can uncomment that. And if I was to save this file, then that package would not be updated. Now note that the dollar sign at the end of the package name, that designates the end of the package name. Without it, it's just going to match everything like it says in the line above. So if you're curious about that, basically all you do is add a dollar sign to the end of the package name. Now I'm not interested in having a blacklist. It's a bad idea anyway. So what I'll do is just leave that commented out here. But I at least wanted to let you know what that's for. Let's scroll down a bit more. And we're going to skip anything that I don't think is relevant. But this one right here, this might be useful. 
Now, if there's a problem when your server automatically updates and something happens to the packages, for example, if you need to fix something, what you could do is uncomment this. And if that situation were to happen, then unattended upgrades is going to try and fix it itself. That's up to you. I personally leave this on. I haven't really had any problems, but by default, that is actually enabled anyway. We saw that it was commented out. You see the default value of true, but I like to be explicit, so that's why I uncommented that one, even though I didn't change the value in the double quotes. Let's go ahead and skip further down. Now here, if you wanted to, you could set up unattended upgrades to install on shutdown. I want everything to happen automatically, so I'm not going to choose that one right there. Let's just go ahead and go further and look at other options. So the settings in this section right here, they pertain to email reports. With unattended upgrades, you can basically set it up to email you a report regarding what happened. So that way you have that in case you need to audit what happened overnight when it upgraded. But in order to use these features, you will need an outbound mail server and that goes beyond the scope of this video. I'm going to show you how to configure this anyway, but I'll leave the email settings up to you. Anyway, what we could do is uncomment this line right here to configure how we are emailed. So for example, by default, it's going to email us anytime it changes something. Now, an option here, as it shows in the text right above this, we could set this to only on error. And what this will do for us is only email us if there's a problem. You can set this to only on error. And what that'll do is cause the email report to only be sent to you when there's a problem. Now here, we have an option that I like personally. I'm going to enable this. Because I feel like if you don't, you could always run into a problem where your hard disk gets full. We definitely don't want that. So I'll set this to true. Basically what this does is automatically remove unused dependencies like the name implies. But what that means is anytime the system is updating packages and then as a result of that, a package or two on your system isn't needed by anything, then what this will do is just remove those for you. And the reason why I recommend this is because if you don't watch your package cache and things like that, especially for those of you that are starving for disk space, it's pretty easy to fill your disk with a bunch of unused dependencies. And sure, it takes years for that to happen, but I like to enable that option just to keep things clean. Now down here, we have an option for automatic reboot. So like you could probably guess, if we enable this and an update requires the system to reboot, then it's going to take care of that for us automatically. So I do recommend this because it's not enough to simply install updates. Sometimes the service needs to be restarted. Other times, perhaps there's a new kernel as a security update and we need to boot into that kernel. So there's going to be situations where a reboot would be necessary so we do want to set this to true. Obviously your system will be down while it reboots, but you know what? I'd rather a server be down for about a minute or so than have a bigger problem. Now, continuing on, we have this option right here. And what this does is configure what happens when an unattended upgrade requires a reboot and people are logged in. Now you can disable this if you want, but I like to keep this enabled because you know what? Sometimes users keep their sessions open forever. So I definitely don't want to create a situation where a server never gets updated because no one logs out. Now down here, what we could do is choose when that happens. By default, it's 2 a.m. Now I do recommend changing this. I don't think it's a good idea to keep this default. Even if you're okay with 2 a.m., it might even be the best time for you. It's also what everyone's going to expect. So for example, if there's a vulnerability during boot, and someone knew that the server is probably going to reboot at 2 a.m. when an update is released, then a threat actor might actually watch your server and wait for the perfect moment or even second to get into your system. But even though it's not really a big deal, I mean, unless it's a targeted attack, no one's trying to do that, it's still a good idea to change this time anyway. Now, before we close the file, we should also look for this option here. It's pretty important. This is where we configure the email address where the reports are sent to. And then also what we need to do is uncomment this to make it take effect. And now we've set up the email that the reports will be sent to. Anyway, what I'll do is save the file, control O and then enter, control X to exit out. And then next, we're going to run sudo and then systemctl, 
restart. And then unattended upgrades. Let's check the status. And it's still running, so that's a good sign. Anyway, now we have our server set up with unattended upgrades. How cool is that? And there you go. We have unattended upgrades installed on our server. How cool is that? Anyway, I have a ton of Linux content coming, so make sure that you subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux. Meanwhile, let me know what you thought of this video or any other one in the comments down below, and then I'll see you in the next video.